Today we're going to look at TrackMan and the driver numbers and how to optimise your distance and accuracy. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go through a, a full TrackMan report from a driver fitting. So I had Matt Lee come in, he's a good golfer, he's a full handicapper from memory. Uh, we're going to look at his numbers on his current driver that he's been playing and really struggling with. Uh, he's been hitting it a lot shorter than in comparison to his irons or other golfers at his level. So then we're going to look and go through the data on the fitted golf club and I'm going to show you the key components of why we've increased his distance uh, and improved his accuracy and overall performance. Yeah, so if we, we have a look here at the first part of uh, Matt's TrackMan report, if we look down the bottom here, so we've got club head speed, so that's his swing speed. So he's sort of just under 100, sort of 98 to 99 miles an hour with his own golf club. Um, which is a little bit heavier than the actual club I've fitted him to. He's swinging, say, 98 miles an hour on average, 97.9. His ball speed's at 135.4 with a smash factor of 1.38. So the, the goal is to have a 1.5 smash factor. That is the key component. When we do a fitting on a driver, I'm trying to get you as close to 150 as possible. That means for how fast you're swinging it, the ball is maxing out in speed. The easiest way to explain that, if you swing 100 miles an hour with your swing speed and the ball goes 150 miles per hour, that's 1 1.5, 150 smash. So that's the key goal. So if we look at Matt's report here where he started, he's swinging at 97.9, 135.4, 138 smash. You can see it's quite low. So what was happening is the club's a little bit heavy for him. The profile of the shaft where it bends doesn't really suit his his swing or release point and he's not hitting the middle of the golf club consistently. Um, so that, that was where that lack of transfer or power is coming from. Then when we have a look at the fitted club, being slightly lighter, he's picked up one mile per hour, nothing significant. But if you look at his ball speed, has gone up 10 miles per hour. So the general rule is, if you increase your ball speed by one mile per hour with a driver, if all the other parameters are the same, you pick up two meters. So in theory, he should be hitting it 20 meters further if all the other numbers are the same. But we'll have a look at the other numbers. He's actually gained a lot more than that, and I'll explain that further down the track when we get to spin. So the next key uh, component or number that we need to look at on TrackMan, which affects distance greatly, is the spin rate of the golf ball. So once you start spinning a driver over 3,000, you start to lose distance, particularly into the wind. The ball gets affected quite a lot. So if you have a look at Matt's um, driver that he was currently using, and this is the, one of the key th reasons he was he's losing distance and, and wasn't up there with his mates and other good golfers. He was spinning his own driver 3,439, so it's way too high. Um, and when we look at the fitted golf club, we've got his spin rate down to 2266. So we've improved or lowered his spin rate 1200 RPM. So it's a huge difference there. Um, if we look at the, the other number here, angle of attack, he has improved his um, angle of attack. He was hitting down on the golf ball too steeply. And I, I believe that was a little bit to do with the weight of the club and the bend of the shaft, um, a bit too stiff as well. So he was you know, hitting a little bit more down. So we've put him into something lighter. His, his angle of attack and that has improved. So that also contributes to the spin rate coming down um, on there. His path's pretty similar within a degree. So he's pretty, pretty good, he's pretty level or even, one degree inside to 0.8 across. His face angle's pretty consistent, he shuts the face a little bit, so he's only one degree um, to 1.9 closed at impact there. Launch angle's pretty similar, one degree different. I actually put him down from a 10.5 head to a, a 9.5 head, uh, which improved his flight and that as well. And then we look at dynamic loft. So with his own driver, he was you know hitting the ball at 17.2 and we've got him down to 15 degrees and then we have a look at the height of the golf ball so you know his height's pretty good for a good golfer you generally want to be around that sort of I'd say 28 to 30 meters if you're swinging around 100 and then the other the key the key part of getting that extra distance and roll is more about the landing angle okay which contributes to the spin rate so if you look at um, Matt's height and landing with his own driver because his ball's spinning too much. His height's good, 28.6, but then he's landing at, at 40.9 or 41 degrees. So he's not 
he's not getting the roll out. The ball's sort of going up and just popping down and landing softly. So what we've been able to do by reducing his spin rate, his height's come down a little bit to 26 or well, 25.6. That's so a little bit on the flatter side, but he wanted a flatter ball flight, plays in the wind, and he wants that roll out. So we've reduced his height, but if you have a look, the landing angle's the big difference, down to 34.6. So the ball's landing a lot shallower with less spin, so it's gonna hit and kick and get a lot more roll. So if we take a look at Matt's report and his dispersion chart, you know, he's got half a dozen shots here. Um, hit about sort of eight, eight shots with each driver and we've taken the best sort of half a dozen on there. So if you have a look at his own driver, you know, which he really does struggle with, it's quite a, a big dispersion, big circle, lack of distance, there's not much there. This is actually the carry distance, not the total. And then you look at the fitted club, it's very tight, it's very consistent, the ball's landing around the same distance all the time. And then we'll, I'll show you the side chart as well of the ball flight. So you'll see on this chart here, he's hit a couple of real high ones there, then a couple of low ones. It's not very consistent. The fitted club is, is pretty good. It's sort of coming out around the same sort of flight each time. Um, and Matt's still working on a couple of things with his swing too. So he's still got you know a little bit more improvement to do, but this is a huge gain, 34 meters in total distance and a reduction of 1100 in spin rate with a tighter dispersion. Yeah, you can see from the results today um, how we've really dialed in. I mean, if you don't have the equipment like TrackMan and the thousands of combinations that we have in heads and shafts, it's impossible for you to dial in the perfect numbers or optimize what someone has and the potential that they can get. You know, we're looking at 34 meters today. You know, if I didn't have this equipment, I'm just guessing. You know, if I'm out on the course, on the range, hitting balls and hit this, try that, yeah, it might feel good, look good, but you can't measure it accurately. The only way you can really truly get the best fit is with TrackMan and having all the options.